So back in the day, I used to do a lot of backpacking. When you're doing backpacking in country like this, um, the last thing you need is a portable generator. But as I've gotten older and kids have come along, car camping and what I would consider sort of luxury camping is coming more in favor. I got a hold of a portable electric generator. Wanted to see, you know, what I could do with that. Uh, happened to be out here on a vacation in the Black Hills. It's gorgeous. What I want to do is I want to test this out and just see what we can use it for, what things I can come up with that you might want to use it with. Um, let's just check it out and see what we've got. Okay. Oh. I don't know why you would want to, but it's 100 degrees out. 55 inch or 60 inch. Okay, so I see on the text spec, and it should operate to negative four degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Perfect. I'm Drew Case. Welcome to Beyond Seclusion, where it is what it is, and I only give you my honest opinion. Now, I have brought you to one of my favorite places on Earth, uh, Custer State Park, Sylvan Lake in South Dakota, the Black Hills. I absolutely love this. I'm out here with my beautiful wife on a vacation, doing some backpacking. I should say camping. Um, we are, however, at a site that is somewhere between car camping and backpacking because it's about a quarter mile to uh, I don't know, maybe almost half a mile uh, from the car. And we have an electric generator to test out today. You're going to want to check this out. Let's see what we can do with it. Let's just run through some of the features here real quick. Um, right up here is the input, okay? It comes with the charging cables for this and we just plug in up here and then plug into an outlet at home. Charges, uh, I think about four hours from when it's, it's almost dead. It does hold a charge really well. I charged it up um, when I was out of town and hadn't done anything with it for weeks. Turned it back on and it was still 100% fully charged. So, you know, we didn't have any drainage there. We've got our DC output here, and we've got several USB. We've got power buttons on each of the areas. So charging a phone, we have the wireless charging up here or the USB ports here. So anything that we can charge with a USB port, we can plug in here and use that. Now, with that said, you're not gonna lug this along simply for charging USB things. There's a lot more efficient ways, but it's just an option because then we have our AC output, you know, 100 to 120 volt, 700 watts. I did try a hot plate that I had at home. It was, I think, 1100 watts and it kept um, essentially blowing a circuit. It would, it would overload and it would shut down. So I'm going to try to get a lower power one for that. And then we have our DC output here and again, the power button. So, you know, any cigarette lighter, which is great. Um, you know, there's another use, which I don't have with me now, fishing and running aerators for minnow buckets and stuff like that. But again, you know, we have other options, smaller, but the nice thing with this is having all of the different options all in one package. I almost forgot real quick, the cords that it comes with, it comes with this, which allows you to charge it from your vehicle. So you can just plug that in and then plug this into the cigarette lighter while you're traveling and you can recharge this. Then you also have, of course, the ability to use that for anything like I was saying, you know, potentially marine or things that you have in your car, you can also use that. Then this cable here, this is for the solar. I 
do not have the solar. I would love to have the solar panels for recharging capability for this. I'm really, really hoping that the company's going to send those so I can do a follow-up on that. For me, that's a game changer having an electric generator that I can recharge using solar. That would be fantastic. And then the last thing is, this is just simply the, the AC inverter, whatever you want to call it. This is what we plug. I'm not an electrician, guys. This is what I plug in indoors and plug into the unit to simply recharge it. And it's only taken four hours, completely dead, to recharge it. Yesterday had the awesome pleasure of being outside and going on a wonderful hike. And let me tell you, when you come back from an almost eight mile hike, how nice would it be to have a wonderful back massage or even massage the legs or, you know, whatever else your imagination can come up with. And let me tell you, that was one idea I had with this generator. Oh. Oh, yeah. Now, I can do this solo. Oh. Or, those of you who are lucky enough to have a beautiful wife or partner, you can have a little outdoor experience with a back massage here. Okay, you know what? I'm going to take a break here and I'm going to go have some fun. We'll be back here in a bit. Okay. I'm feeling a whole lot better. I had just had a nice massage here. But before I did that, I needed to go to the tent and I needed to get that air mattress blown up. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this for the pump on the air mattress. Now, a couple other things that have come to mind and I'm gonna, I'm gonna brainstorm and try to come up with some others is the, you know, one of the first things that came to mind is a burner, okay? To heat up coffee or to cook because when we arrived, we were coming into some bad weather and it was looking like maybe we we're gonna have to do some cooking you know, inside a tent, and the last thing you want to do is have open flame, a gas burner, or anything like that. But, you know, just an electric hot plate setting on a box or something, much more doable. So I'm going to try to get a hold of an electric burner, and we're, we're going to test that out. Um, and I'll come up, you know, with whatever else, and, and we'll see. But let's run over to the tent and see if we can blow up the air mattress. Here's the pump for the air mattress in the tent um i think it's okay, so it's showing 120 volt 60 hertz 0.95 amps 110 watt um i would think that we would be fine with this uh wait, you gotta, here i'll show okay, you so i keep pushing the power button <laughs> it goes for a little bit and then it stops And it's fully charged, it's showing 100%. And I really do not want to blow this air mattress up. I mean, I know I'm full of hot air, but I ain't got this much hot air in me. Um, kind of frustrating. I, I would think this should be able to just zip this thing right up. Anyway, we'll get her up. Okay. So the air mattress thing eh, it didn't work so good. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I'm going to reach out to the company and see if I can get some info and get back to you. Uh, okay, another thing that I thought of, it could easily be a day like this where you're camping. I don't know why you would want to, but it's 100 degrees out and come nightfall, you know, you got a nice tent. You may want a fan in there. So what I'm gonna do is is see how long we can run this fan on a full charge on high. Okay, so right now that's the time we got. Let's just see see how long we can run it. Okay, so it just died. That was on high speed. So you can kind of figure, do a little math, how long that would last definitely would be a positive uh, with heat like this and you know in the hundreds what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna charge that up overnight I want to try to do a pot of coffee in the morning and run the TV on it and also uh, was talking to a friend you know something else this would be fantastic for 
which I hadn't thought about, is anybody that has CPAP or BiPAP or anything for sleep apnea that's camping, you should get plenty of power out of this to get you through the night. And that, that would be extremely helpful. Okay, it's morning and I'm in desperate need of some coffee here. We're gonna go with Mr. Coffee. Moment of truth. Oh, nope, got too much pole. Yeah, Mr. Coffee's got too much pole. Thank goodness we've got to plug in because I need some coffee. Now, do you know what is actually the most important, critical, life-saving, more so than coffee? You know, and we can take this and expand it into SHTF, the apocalypse, the end of the world. What is more important for my survival than coffee in the morning? Yo, oh, apparently I'm not as good as I used to be. There you go, guys. You know, absolutely. The great outdoors, you need to bring your electronics, your PS4. Um, and those that are, not, that are not familiar with me, that, that's complete sarcasm, dry sense of humor. Um, yeah, you've got bigger problems than needing electricity if you're dragging something like this up into the Black Hills. But... For vacation, stuff like that, it is nice to have that capability. Where we live, we have frequent frequent power outages. Uh, one in particular comes to mind this winter with this, this crazy weather. We had electrical storms, and we lost power for a day. We lost it at like 4 p.m. in the afternoon. It got dark at like 5. We had absolutely nothing to do. No power, no lights. Uh, we had just started watching a movie. Something like this would be really helpful for that. You know, just emergency power. Anyway, I thought it was kind of a humorous uh, example of, of what you could use it for. It is what it is. Okay, so here is the next most absolute critical thing in today's age. And we are completely hooked up. So there's the PlayStation. We're digging into the now. Okay, so now that we know that it works, I'm just gonna, I got a bigger TV here. There's absolutely no way you're probably gonna be running a TV like this in an RV or a campsite. Um, if you got this at your campsite, you, you have bigger issues than needing portable electrical. Anyway, that is, a, I think, a 55 inch or 60 inch, and I'm just gonna leave it on like we did the fan. I'm just curious to see how long, it says 100%. Um, last night I unplugged it, and I don't know that it was quite, but it's going to give us a good idea how long this will run. It is 6.40 in the morning. Let's just see how long we can run the TV on that. All right, so we just lost power here. And we are completely drained. Okay, so the battery is completely dead. Let's see how long it's gonna take to fully charge. All right, so that's all it took to get 100% recharged from completely dead. It's not bad. Okay, so I see on the text spec that it should operate to negative four degrees Fahrenheit I'm not exactly sure of my deep freeze, but it's cold enough. Let's put it to the test. Let's uh, let's freeze this sucker and uh, see how it does. Okay, so it's been a while here in the freezer. It should be good and frozen. Let's uh, let's take it out and plug it in. Okay, yeah, one of my favorite channels. All right, we can see. It's frozen. It's cold. Okay. It did, being frozen, drop down our juice from 100 to 80. I'm expecting as that warms back up, like all batteries do, that that will come back up. But anyway, 
There you go, guys. Deep freeze. Still working. Super happy. Doorbell just rang. What I've been waiting for arrived. I found this at Walmart. It is a 500 watt burner, okay, which I'm hoping will not trip this so that we can use it for cooking. Like when I was in the Black Hills raining or something, you know, this would be something nice to potentially set up inside a tent uh, carefully, but also, you know, power outage or something like that. Anyway, I've got my old backpacking um, coffee pot here and show you that the water is not boiling. Okay, it's not hot. I'm gonna put this on here and see if we can get this to boil. I'll just turn it on slow here. Okay. We're showing a pole uh, 486. So we're doing good. Let's just turn this all the way up. Okay, so we're on five, hopefully. We will be able to get this to boil. We'll see how long it takes, one o'clock. All right, this is good. Just real quick, I did not have this fully charged, so we'll you know, test it out here. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, perfect way to end this video. Improvise, adapt, and overcome. I found burner, that would work with this under 500 watts. Actually, I would suggest potentially um, having a burner that, that comes with it because this is gonna be really popular. Anyway, uh, did that in short order and really didn't use that much juice. Great way to finish. There you go, guys. It is what it is. You decide what you think. Um, is it worth the coin? Is it worth lugging it around? You decide for yourself. Anyway, until next time on Beyond Seclusion, this is going to be a little different because it has nothing to do with guns. Happy enjoying the outdoors and camping. Be sure to enjoy nature as much as possible. Until next time, take care.